Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Wall to Wall Art. And today I'm going to be doing an art and review piece for one of my patrons. His name is Milton and he's inked over a Batman Dave Finch piece. Uh, so I'm going to explain a little bit about my Patreon. My Patreon, I have different tiers where you can show support for me making these videos for you. I also have mentorship tiers. So if you want to be a penciler, inker, colorist, letter, letterer, uh, you can go in there and choose the mentorship that works best for you and then sign up for it and then I would uh, critique your work. So if you're interested in having a professional artist critique your work, uh, just uh, check out my Patreon. So my Patreon is patreon.com slash world wrong art and there's a lot of different tiers that you can choose from. So a little bit about me. My name is Waldo Wong. I'm a comic book artist from Marvel and DC Comics. You can see some of my work over on my website. My website is waldowongart.com. A lot of different things that you can look at. There's a gallery page, a video, news section, blog, even a site where you can purchase original art from me as well as prints and things like that. So today I'm going to be looking over Milt's work and we're going to be doing an art review and critique. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're gonna take a look at the pencils first. So the pencils right over here, this one's pencils that uh, Milton actually got uh, from a, maybe a Batman Absolute Edition where they print the comic without the inks and without the colors, but it does have some of the letters right over here. And I'm gonna be doing markups in red, so when I'm done, I will send the markup back to um, Milton and then he would just go back in there and do adjustment. I'm gonna pick the correct brush that I use. I'm gonna use the uh, hard round brush uh, to do the markup. So we're gonna use red color right over here. Okay, so it's easier to find my markups. So let's take a look at the pencils. Here's the pencils that Dave Finch did. Uh, all, all, all in this raw form. Okay, right over here. Okay, good. There's Batman looking uh, behind a door, looking through a room. In the room, there's like these little cameras, and then there's a lady on the floor. There's top two panels, and the bottom is, uh, is the uh, the half slash panel. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the inks. We're gonna take the art work over here. So right over here, I do like how the inks are done nicely over here, where just like a thinner lines over here and thin and then thick and then always bounce your line weights around when you're doing background. So that's very nice. Um, I like how some of these are thicker and then these lines are hatched over here. Uh, let's see if the penciler indicated that. The penciler didn't do that, so that's a very nice touch over here, these thicker lines. It almost looks like the rock has a chisel piece that, that is uh, chiseled in there. Some of these lines, they're kind of meshing together. Let's see if the pencils were like that. So the pencils was drawn like that. It has a little bit of a, a thickness on the outside. But here, it's, it's missing some lines to show that thickness. Let's take a look at uh, Batman's uh, symbol. It almost looks like um, the 1989 Michael Keaton, Tim Burton style Batman logo. Uh, yeah, so there's like a, a round orb over there that has a little bit of thickness. So just, so I know that that's there. So when I look at the reference photo here, um, it's missing that thickness. So I would just go in there and make sure I would have that extra uh, line like right across. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some of this. So right away, uh, I noticed that uh, Batman's head over here is meshing in with the background. The background's hair is kind of meshing in. You don't, we don't know, we know that the head's here, but we don't know if it, if it head's like this or if the head's like this. Uh, we'll take a look at the pencil. The pencil actually drew it in, so sometimes it's better to separate a little bit. Uh, I, I can tell that there's a little bit of white over here. The pencil drew, drew that. But when I look at the inks, let me look. take a look at the inks, okay? Okay, let me go over here. Let me turn this on. Cancel this. Okay, right over here. That's the pencils. Let's take a look at the inks. The inks, some of the white is gone, so I would just make sure some of that white is like kept in there. I'm gonna ink that in and then maybe give this a little bit of a triangle. Let's take a look at the pencils. Yeah, make sure the triangle is still in there and then indicate that black, uh, the white line. That's called a halo, just ink that in. And that would also halo the inside just to make sure we see the rest of Batman's head. That way it sticks out further in the foreground than in the background. Okay, when I'm making, sometimes instead of having that uh, black line just end like right there, I would actually go in there and just ink that all the way off the page. Uh, right over here. Actually, that's the panel. So I actually you know I, I would keep that in, keep that in there. Just ink that directly right over there. Now, pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at some of the line work over here. Some of these lines are a little bit uh, chunky. I don't know if the pencil is calling for yeah the pencil is calling for that. But um, let's let's go in there and make those edgy instead of like bloopy lines. Just make it a little bit more crisp. Uh, make it sharp, like right over here. Give that angle. Okay. 
just uh, this one this one's pretty good that one's like we can check over here so some of these just kind of go in there and make it more angular let's take a look at the pencils over here yeah so this is a cape that overlaps this is another cape right here that overlaps so what i would do here i would accentuate this line and then kind of make this go that way so let's take a look at the pencils yeah so that's one fold and that's another fold i will accentuate this line and then make this line kind of go like that just to give it more of an edge to the to the inks okay so some of these areas they're they're kind of in a blunt i like my lines to start uh thin and then go thick and then and then you know it is as long as it's starting to blunt uh, i like these lines to be sharp like these lines so keep these sharp don't have it in the blend, so make sure those are sharp. So these are done well. These are done well. Okay, so let's take a, let's take a look at some of the hatch lines over here. So this hatch line over here, some of them are a little bit too close to another where they're meshing, and these are done nicely. So when you're hatching, try to make sure everything is spaced evenly uh, all the way across. Okay, uh, some of these uh, tapered lines, they're, I like how this one, they're closing up like these little uh, negative space tips are closing up in a good area but all of a sudden this one's here and all of a sudden this one's out here and this one goes in here and this one's out here try to have them consistent i'm going to um, take this part of your image and then explain what i'm talking about so like i'm actually i'm just going to go in there and into this line i'm going to rotate this canvas and then using using my brush i'm just going to draw those lines go thick go thick press down start thin press down start thin press down this way, all these negative space areas, these little triangles, they're kind of like ending in the same place. Sometimes you can go back in there and just kind of like close them up in a nice area. So what I mean when I say close them up is you, you draw the line. If it doesn't close up, go back in there with a brush and just go in there. A brush or micron or whatever tool that you're using, just go in there and just close them up a little bit. This round part is a little bit, uh, little bit off over here. Let's take a look at the pencils. Yeah, so right here, just a, let's take a look at the anatomy. So this is the rib cage. This is the muscle on the outside. Yeah, so I, the way I would ink this part here, I would just go in here and just go here, make this all black, and then just taper these lines going here. And then from here, I would just taper that. I wouldn't try to go around. It's not really a circle over there. Okay, uh, good job on the spacing here. Uh, nice job on the negative space uh, white hash lines. And I would have this white line go a little bit thicker. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at uh, this image over here. Good job, it's just a background with, uh, with stones over there. Um, what I would do is I would use white to break it up a little bit, just to give it a little bit more texture to the artwork. So I would go white and then just kind of break this up and then add some white lines over here, um, some, some, some textures over here, and then just break this up a little bit. Just give it more, more, more like a space into the artwork. So I will follow some of the uh, black lines and just uh, use white ink and to break it in there. You can use a white gel pen, but just don't press down too hard. If you press down too hard, uh, those lines will just get thicker. So same with this, um, this one looks kind of off, okay? Let's take a look at the pencils. I mean, the pencils, they have thin lines going all the way across so it doesn't take away attention, uh, it's just further back. But here, I, I noticed with the inks, it's a little bit thicker. Um, so what we want to do is when we're inking those lines, we want to keep those lines consistently thin. Okay, don't 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 press down one too hard and then all of a sudden thin and then hard. You want them to be consistently thin so it doesn't take away attention from the overall image. So I'm gonna go in here and then hatch in a few lines. You can create. Uh, let me go in there a little bit closer. You go in there and hit just hatch these lines. Just keep them thin. Okay, keep them thin so it doesn't away, take away attention. Okay, uh, nice job on right away Batman's head over here. I really like how this part looks, okay? So right here, uh, with Batman heads, we have a little bit of thick line here, and then it's thinner, and then it's thicker. This is good line weight. I'm gonna give this a good check mark over here. Let's take a look at the pencils. Yeah, so the penciler, uh, Dave Finch, he actually drew a thicker line here and thinner and then thicker. Dave is he's also a really good uh, inker himself. Uh, so when he pencils, he's also thinking in advance of how the inks is going to be and then he's, he draws some of that in. So it's good that you, you follow that line. Okay, I do like, oh, this is done nicely. This area right here. Very good, Milton. So Milton has been following. Uh, actually, he's been subscribed to my Patreon um, as a, as a mentorship for for quite some time now. And I remember seeing his work in the beginning, and it was a little bit rough. But 
each time he shows me new work and he's listening to these critiques that uh, you're watching now, he's actually learning from me. I know a lot of you are just watching this, you're not doing the Patreon thing, and, and I'm glad that you're learning something, but I know that if you're doing the work and then I'm critiquing your work, you learn much, much more. So this, I, I see how Milton is uh, like drastically improving very, very fast. So the good thing about this one is, these lines over here, they're thick, they start to gradually get thinner and then very thin. Not only that, he's spacing these lines right over here, he's spacing these lines closer together. Okay, then my computer froze, let me... Yeah, so these lines on the left, they're spaced thicker and closer together, and as you go towards the middle, it gets further apart and thinner, and then as you go to the really thin area, it gets really thin and spaced further apart. That's a good gradual, gradual uh, fade over there. So I'm gonna take a look at uh, some of the other areas. Okay, so that's, this part's done well. Uh, some of these tapered lines over here, they're kind of off. We see like a, like this, this part's thick. We wanna keep them consistent. We, we want tapered lines to be gradual, gradually spaced evenly and just close them up evenly. Yeah, so these taper lines isn't just taper for the sake of tapering, you're actually tapering them uh, to create a gradual light to dark. Okay, yeah, these these are nicely done. Good job, Milton. Good job on this. Yeah, good. Yeah, you see this right here? See, this is too thick over here, and then you have some thin lines. Just keep them uh, spaced evenly. Uh, some of the holding lines, let's take a look at the, the pencils. This area, you see that? You have this double line here. Uh, try not to have that double line. Just keep it as one line for the for that, the, for that shoulder over there, okay? Let's take a look at some of the other areas. Good job here. I like I like how this one looks. Uh, the space really. Now, right away, I'm looking at the door. I like the texture of all of this. That's done well. Like we we have some uh, thick lines happening over here, and it goes thin and then thick. And we have those round texture. So nicely, like it doesn't take away attention from the rest of the Batman. Uh, but when I get over here, the white lines on top of the black area, that is taking away attention. It looks a little bit too thick and the pattern doesn't look like the pattern that's up here. Uh, let's take a look at the pencils and see how it was drawn in pencil. Okay, so in pencil, it was just a solid black. Uh, so Milton has the right idea. That idea is to go in there and add some white textures. But when you're inking white textures, kind of look at how uh, the penciler drew it and kind of mimic that pattern when you're doing the white. I'm gonna go in here and get rid of some of the black and redraw and, or re-ink some of the areas. So I'm gonna get rid of, let's see, let me erase that, and get this, get my brush, and then fill all this in black so we see how it looks like first, okay? Get rid of some of that white line, uh, black line, yeah. Get rid of some of that white line. Now I'm gonna go in there with a quill or a brush or you know with, with white ink and now break up those lines very thin okay I'll also do the same thing that you've done up here like some thicker some thinner uh, go into different directions and then right here I'll follow through some of these lines so right over here see that and they kind of break them up a little bit if you use a quill and use a white ink it works much better than a gel pen or white out. Uh, if you look over on my website, uh, if you follow the links, uh, actually there's links below this video description that goes to my website. And on my website, I have this big yellow button called the uh, M Walden on Amazon. If you look there, you'll see some of the art supplies that I use. I list all the art supplies that I have. Uh, there's bottles of white ink that you can use that you can actually drop into your quill or dip your brush in and then you can actually control the thickness of the, the ink. It's, it's just like white uh, black ink, but, it, but it's white color so going here so that looks much better than something that's like so big like like these guys so it looks kind of off I know like you're adding more um, if you're adding more artwork and make it look better try to follow the same texture like right, right here so if, when I zoom back you look at the wall like the, the door over here and look at the bottom part so there's that to, to look out for I'm gonna rotate back to um, my red uh, red now I do this in red because after I finish marking up, them up, I do send the hard copy to uh, to the Patreon and then upload the same video that you're all watching so we all can learn from it. Uh, Milton will learn more because he's uh, actually going in there and sending me samples that he's done and every comment that I make, he, he's remembering it and he's applying it in future uh, 
uh, samples that he does. Uh, right here, right away, I see there's something that's a little bit off. This Batman's logo right here. This, these taper, the bottom taper lines are pretty good. These one actually over here, they look pretty good over here. Uh, they close up nicely, they're space even. This one's space even, it doesn't really close up that nicely over here. This one is a little bit all over the place. We have some thicker ones, we have some connecting together. So we want this to look something more like that or like this. Okay, over here, these negative patterns over here, they're, you, you want them to be closing up a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna rotate the canvas because even when I draw traditionally or ink traditionally or when I do it digitally, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, the, all the tools are used the same way. You go thin, press thicker, go thin, press thicker, and you want those lines to close up evenly in the same place. You see how I'm starting this right here? I'm also ending it in the same pattern. What you don't want is where you have uh, lines going like this and then all of a sudden it's down here and it's up here and all of a sudden it's down there. You don't want this negative triangles to be going like randomly all over the place. You want them to have a gradual pattern. Hatch lines, cross hatch lines, table line is to create a gray pattern. Okay, like here you see some of these lines over here. These are nicely spaced apart. These are nicely spaced apart. All of a sudden you have this big chunk that meshes together. Let's see how the pencils look. Yeah, so in the pencils, it doesn't have all that is spaced apart evenly. So with inks, you wanna keep that uh, space evenly, like right over here. Let me see if that's the right place. Here's the belt, here's this part. Okay, here's the belt. Yeah, so we have it all black. So if you're gonna add more details into it and then you're gonna space it evenly, just go in there and just make sure it's spaced evenly. Okay, like that, or pull these in, uh, pull this, pull them in more evenly. So let's take a look at this. I do like how this glove here. Uh, let's see if the penciler did that. Yeah, it's thicker and then thinner and then thicker. That's that's a nice nice texture over there. So that that looks pretty good. I'm gonna mark off areas that looks good and then uh, fix some of the areas that looks a little bit off. Okay, um, right here, some of the gloves. There's still some of the pencils. Let's take a look at this. Okay, uh, take a look at the figure on the bottom. Okay, now now I'm looking at this, I see some lines that are kind of wobbly. Like here's this line here. Uh, it would be better if you can go in there and make that line a little bit more smoother in, as opposed to like having it wobbly. Now I'm gonna explain how to make lines wobbly and ev everyone's gonna um, like benefit from this if you're an artist. Even if you're just penciling or inking uh, or doing any kind of line work or just basically just drawing, the slower you draw the line, the more chance of that line being wobbly. Okay, when you're drawing or inking or doing whatever and with whatever tools you use, uh, don't look at the tip of the line that you're drawing. Don't follow that line. Okay, I don't want your eyes to look at the tip of that and draw the line. Instead, what I want you to do, uh, you can even, even grab a scratch piece of paper now, grab a pencil or pen or whatever, look at the start of the line, look at the end of the line. Okay, and then you put your pen to paper or brush your paper, look at the beginning, and then mimic that motion. See if your hand can go there really quickly without drawing the drawing line. I call that a ghost line. Ghost line means you're drawing a line, but you're not touching pen to paper. If it doesn't go there automatically, rotate your canvas, rotate your Bristol board until your hand goes there automatically. Once you do a few like practice lines and it does go, go there and it works, I want you to put the pencil to paper now, instead of looking at the tip of the brush or the tip of the pencil, I want you to look at the destination and then just quickly draw that line to the destination. Do a ghost line and watch. Once you look at the destination, your hand will automatically stop there. It's like driving a car. When you're driving a car, you look further in the distance. You never look in front of your hood. You don't look at what's in front. You look at a distance. So that way you can drive a smoother line. If you're looking at the front of the hood and you're driving, you're, you're gonna be waving all over the place. So when you're inking, you can look at where you're starting that line, where you're ending the line, do a ghost line. If it doesn't work, rotate it where your hand is comfortable and then draw the line. This also works for uh, arc lines. For example, like I'm gonna look at uh, this arc here. When you draw a line, you don't always have to draw one line all the way across. You can draw a partial line, stop, twist the canvas, turn the paper, and then draw a partial line. So right here, I'm gonna look at here, 
And then I'm looking here, I'm gonna draw that line really quickly. I'm gonna rotate the canvas right over here. I'm gonna look at this arc, I'll draw that line. I'll rotate it again. And then after I rotate, I'll draw that line again. Just where you're gonna get a perfect arch all the way, okay? So another thing I do is when I'm inking, I rotate my canvas constantly with my left hand. Uh, I'm rotating this because my right hand, I can do a better arch going this way than an arch going this way. Like if you look at this way, you'll see that my lines are a little bit wobbly. That happens because my, my arm, I'm moving my wrist and my finger. You're moving two things, that's why it's wobbly. If you're only using your wrist like a compass or using your finger like a compass or even your elbow like a compass, you can get a much better line. I'm gonna zoom back out and demonstrate that for you. So right here, like if I'm using my fingers, I'll get nice little lines like that. They're parallel to each other. If I'm using my wrist, I can get longer lines like this and they're parallel to each other. I can draw as many lines like over and over, they're still gonna be parallel to each other because I'm locking my elbow and my fingers. Now, if I want longer lines, I would just lock my wrist. I'll lock my wrist, not move my wrist. I won't move my finger and I'm only using my elbow, okay? So when that happens, I'm drawing lines. I can draw as many lines as I want. They're gonna be parallel to each other. They're not gonna be wobbly. They're not gonna be shaky. They're gonna be straight, okay? So we have that. Now I'm gonna take a look at the rest of uh, Milton's lines uh, that he's done. Now I noticed that some of the ovals, they're a little bit shaky. So when I ink, I like using templates and repeatographs. You can also use microns and ink all using repeatographs. I mean, you can also use microns and ink over templates and get that nice wobble line. Now if you don't want to use um, uh, templates, you can freehand that. Freehanding it takes a little bit more work, but just go in there and kind of like follow the line and then I would rotate it rotate it and then arch it uh, arch it this way and then draw that line only because you, your hand is easier to draw I mean you're more comfortable drawing arc this way than the other way okay so let's take a look at some of the other areas that uh, Milton work on let's see I'm gonna take a look at uh, some of the buildings in the background so nice nice job on the like some of the bricks over here I like I really like the thick and thin that's happening over here. I also like the bloopiness, that looks really good. Okay, right, this one's off. This pole over here, right away, I noticed this pole is rounded over here, which is, there's nothing wrong with being rounded. And I noticed this, this is cornered, and there's nothing wrong with that. But both of them together, it, it just doesn't work. Either you keep that corner there, and you make it both cornered on both sides, or make this round, and then keep it round on, on the other side. Let's see how the penciler drew it. So the pencil drew it round. So what I would do is I would just make this rounded and then I will also make this rounded. Now I noticed that it's kind of wobbly here. I, I should mention um, artists when they're drawing or with inking. Uh, imagine you're drawing an oval or a cylinder. So imagine a cylinder that goes uh, like this. Okay, this arch that you have here, you want that arch to be the same arch all the way throughout. Now that rule applies for this round part. Now, I'm going to take a look at the penciler. So if I'm going to ink on top of this, we want this arch to be nicely arch, and anything in between, we want to keep that same arch. Okay, right over here. Keep that same arch throughout the whole object. You, you don't want one area to be like up here, and all of a sudden it's like flat over here, and it's round over here, and this arch is kind of off. It looks like a like maybe straps that's like in different angles. You wanna keep it consistently uh, parallel arch, if, if I may. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at some of the other areas, but um, yeah, so that background. So I see some white out over here. Yeah, I see some, yeah, I see some white out over here. Let me see what's going on over there in the pencils. Okay, I see what's happening. Okay, so uh, Milton actually took, um, looks like, uh, a page from uh, Absolute Edition where these comics will print the comics and they won't have it inked or they won't have a letter and they'll have a whole series. That's actually pretty, pretty smart. Sometimes you go online and you're looking for high-res images, you can't really find it, but if you buy the, the, the uh, these uh, Absolute Editions or uh, uh, raw editions or whatever, or raw covers, you have the pencils. And then what you do is you can scan it. Once you scan it, uh, you can use Photoshop and remove these pencil, uh, these word bubbles before you print it out to ink. Uh, I noticed that Milton, and there's nothing wrong with uh, 
using white out. Uh, Milton printed it out and then used white out to get rid of it and ink on top of it. And that's okay too. Uh, one thing uh, as artists, um, one thing, one of my mentors that told me, uh, uh, Paul Smith, uh, he said, uh, when you're using white out, it's absolutely okay. There's nothing wrong with using white out. If you use white out, no one's gonna use, know you use white out after the book is printed. Like, white out's kinda cool too. It's, People who collect uh, original art, they will look at the original artwork and they'll say, hey, take a look at the whiteout over there. That means they made a mistake over there. Whiteout isn't only for uh, removing mistakes and getting rid of lines that you don't need. You can also use whiteout to uh, use that to make special effects, like for example, the doorway over here. So so you can use white, out, uh, white ink to do special effects like that. Okay, we're gonna take a look at some of the lines over here. So I noticed this area, these lines over here, they're, they're a little bit too thick to my liking. When I'm making artwork, I like to have the holding lines a little bit thicker. Uh, holding line is the outside of the figure, and then the interior lines a little bit thinner. Okay, we're gonna take a look at some of these other areas, okay. Good job on the shoulder right here, the shoulder, the cross hatch lines. You see the little squares that uh, Milton, uh, my patron who, who did this piece? When you have these nice, perfect squares over here, they're nicely hatched and nicely inked. Uh, that, that's good. But when you have areas that's like, you see you see the square is like a little bit more like a rectangle and all of a sudden it becomes a square and then some of it disappears, that's a little bit off. When you're doing cross hatch or hatching, you wanna, create a tone where it looks like a printer printed out. So when you have these little diamond shapes or little boxes in between these little hatch lines, that means you're doing a really good job. Like I'm gonna point it out, like this area, you see these little rectangles over here? They're nicely similar to one another. Like over here, this rectangle, rectangle is a little bit smaller, this is a little bit bigger, is, so it's a little bit off. Or like this one is like a little bit crooked over here. So if you can get these rectangles when you're doing cross hatch work, and they look similar to one another, that's very good uh, crosshatch uh, I work over here. Like this one, nicely spaced. All these nicely spaced. Even here, it's nicely spaced. All oh, this is nicely spaced. Well, all of a sudden, it's like this one's a little bit too sharp over here. So we want to keep that a little bit, uh, like a little bit more cleaner over there, okay? I'm gonna take a look at some of the other works. Let's take a look at the face. Good job on the cross hatching. Uh, good job on the hatching over here. Um, this one here, it, it looks like there's a blunt that got cut off. Um, make, make sure to keep all your lines sharp. I know it looks like there was white out that cleaned it up. This one, we have a little bit of a thicker white line, and all of a sudden right next to it, you have a thin line. I would go in there and keep everything uh, consistent. So I'm gonna rotate this and it kind of ink some of those lines and give you an example of what I'm talking about. Right here, ink this line. Keep those lines consistent, okay? You want that to look more like a tone than, actually, than an actual object, okay? The more consistent you can have those lines, the better it's gonna look like more of a tone. Okay, so look how I'm spacing those apart, uh, spacing those apart evenly. And if I wanna close them up, I just push them darker and have them a little bit closer. Okay, let's rotate this back to how it is and take a look at some of the other work. Okay, when you're getting objects and you have something in the foreground, I will actually have that line a little bit thicker. Let's take a look at the pencils. Pencils, see how thick this line is compared to some of the background wall lines? I know this one is because it's a shadow. I would have these lines a little bit thicker. Uh, I would go in there and fill this line in a little bit just to make it a little bit thicker. So there you have it. That is Milton's work. Let's take a look at the inks one more time. Pretty good, uh, nice backgrounds, some areas. Uh, yeah, some areas, just make sure it's a little bit cleaner. If you have a white line there, just make sure that, let's take a look at the pencils. Okay, so that's a little bit white. Yeah, make sure that white is consistently across, like like that. Good, good job. So, yeah, again, Milton's been uh, one of my Patreon mentorships for a while. I remember seeing his earlier work, it was all over the place, but a lot of the spacing lines and the catch lines, they're nicely controlled. It's just uh, figuring out uh, what areas to have those lines close up, the little triangles. Um, also, lines are a little bit wobbly. Go in there and make those lines a little bit cleaner, sharper, and then your inks will be much better. Patreon is also, I mean, make, uh, Milton is also a good uh, penciler as well. Uh, he's, he's, his art is improving each time I see his work. So keep up the good work. 
So I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you're also interested in being one of my patrons, uh, check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash art. Over there, there's different tiers that you can select. Uh, tiers where you're showing support for watching these videos that I make for you, as well as tiers for penciling, inking, or lettering or whatever you want and there's, uh, there's even a mystery box where I send you a mystery artwork sometimes I'll send uh, original published art uh, and you never know what you're gonna get so check that out and if you're interested in learning more about me uh, again my name is Walter Wong I'm a comic book artist from Marvel DC and you can check out my website my website is waldowongart.com and over there there's a lot of fun things that you can look at there's a blog uh, there's uh, uh, videos there's news there's gallery there's even a store where you can by uh, some of the books that I've worked on as well as supplies. Check out that Walden on Amazon button and some of the prints, you can order prints there. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so anytime I upload a video, you won't be missing any of them. Hit that like button and comment down below if you have any questions. Anytime people ask me questions in my comments, I always try to respond to everyone as best as I can. So take care, good day, and have fun drawing. Bye-bye.